So we were talking about structures and structural isomers, and then there's something else called conformations. Conform, F-O-R-M, form. So these are like different forms. Conform, not confirmation, which might be something you did at church. Conformation. And this is the three-dimensional spatial arrangement of those atoms. Okay, I have to put this down. You see this model of ethane that I made? I can rotate this around that bond between the two carbons. And so I can have it this way so that all of the hydrogens are lined up. If I look down the axis, carbon, carbon, I see all the hydrogens are lined up. Or I can twist it and have them be out of whack. And that's what this illustration is trying to show us. So here we've got a carbon-carbon bond, and we can rotate this. This is a more complicated molecule. Here we've got CH3, and in this one, they're aligned, and here, now they're not in line with each other. That's the same molecule, though. It's not an isomer because the atoms are connected in the same way, but they've just twisted around a little bit. That's okay, just find a seat. Okay, so a conformation is when you get rotation around a single bonds. And it's the same molecule, but you can have different conformations. No breaking of bonds takes place. So we need to be able to recognize the difference between conformational structures and structural or constitutional isomers, okay? And how they're drawn can be a little deceiving because these two pictures don't look exactly the same, do they? But in order to make this one into that one, do we have to break any bonds? No, we just have to twist one. And single bonds do twist. If they were constitutional isomers, in, able to, in order to go from one to the other, we would actually have to break a bond and connect it differently. And this is why you know, having a model kit can really help. So you can play with this at home. Say, okay, well, I can go like this, but if I want to make that other one, I have to, what's that sound, a distinctive sound? I have to pull it apart and stick it together in a different way. Now this, this little one that I've got here, there's only one isomer, so I can't make an isomer out of it. So let's look at C6H14 and draw different conformations. Not different isomers, not constitutional isomers, but conformations. So I'm just going to do a, a skeletal formula, so we're just going to look at the carbons and we're going to ignore the hydrogens. There's 14 of them, and we're going to draw multiple structures. We don't want to mess with that. The simplest way to draw this is just six carbons in a row. 